Hey everyone, welcome to Microsoft Flight Simulator vs. Reality, where we visit interesting, important, and unique airports around the globe, both in real life as well as in Microsoft Flight Simulator. In this video, we're looking at the city of Chicago and the airports of O'Hare and Midway. Chicago is not only special to Microsoft Flight Simulator because it was the default starting location from the beginning until Meg's Field was bulldozed, but it is also currently my home, so I sure care how it looks in the game. This video will be a bit longer than my other comparisons, so timestamps to different locations and airports are down below. Let's begin, like so many of my videos, at Chicago O'Hare. O'Hare is a handcrafted airport if you pony up for the deluxe and premium deluxe editions of the game. The airport is by no means a great airport, falling apart and representative of the corrupt bureaucracy of the city, but is important as it is, or was due to the current situation, the only airport in North America with direct flights to every inhabited continent. Each terminal is very distinct, so we'll do them in order. Terminal 1 is for United and some other Starlands carriers. It's a long and thin terminal with a second concourse accessible by the Underground Tunnel of Love. One of my most memorable flights here was on one of the last 747s to Narita before I even started this channel. The B concourse is home to the Polaris Lounge, which has a great view of the runway. I haven't flown out of Terminal 2 all that much, other than Air Canada. and Delta. The Delta Sky Club also has a nice view. Terminal 3 is where I have a lot of fond memories, and plenty of not-so-fond. It's host to American, Alaska, Birit, Iberia, and JAL. The Alaska flights are from the G-Gates, while the main concourses of K and H form the core of the terminal, and L on the edge. I've been there on beautiful summer days where you can see Terminal 5 and the downtown in the distance. Two snowy disasters where most flights are cancelled. There's no Terminal 4, long story, so let's check out Terminal 5, which is a short distance away from the other terminals. Terminal 5 is where all international flights arrive, and a rather odd grab bag of airlines depart from. The lounges are also more limited, including the SAS lounge, and the Swiss lounge. You do get a nice view of the rest of the airport, though. So in all honesty, I think they did a decent job with O'Hare, capturing the different styles of each of the terminals. The most scenic landings at O'Hare are from the east. If you sit on the left side of the plane, you'll get a great view of the skyline.
let's hop in something more sporty to check out the city. Follow the Kennedy Expressway with the blue line in the middle of the highway. and take the Ohio Street exit. Chicago is one of the photogrammetry cities, and it shows. While we'll see it's a little rough around the edges, it's incredibly impressive. There's too many sites to point out, but I'll do my best. There's the Rainforest Cafe, now closing, and the flagship McDonald's. Flying towards the lake, we come to Navy Pier. Following the river, we can have our own architecture boat tour, passing the Sheraton, Wrigley Building, Trump Tower, Marina City, and Merchandise Mart. Taking a left at the Y, we head south on the river. The foliage is getting a bit out of hand here. Once it clears, you enter the South Loop. There's the shops at Roosevelt. And you can make out the stores on the other side of the tracks. Returning to the South Loop, we fly towards the lake, passing the LaSalle Station, the old post office, and Dearborn Station. Flying towards Museum Campus, we pass the Statue of Columbus that has since been removed. There's the Field Museum, Shedd Aquarium, and Adler Planetarium. The boats in Burnham Harbor are a bit janky. Why am I focusing on this area? Well, here we see Northerly Island, which used to be Meg's Field, the default airport for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Illegally, Mayor Daley bulldozed the fully functioning airport without telling the FAA. Now a green space, it's no longer an airport you can visit. But screw you, Daly, I'm coming in. See? No problem. I can even take off. While we're here, we can check out Soldier Field. There's so many other things to see and do and directions to go. Flying north from the Field Museum, we fly over Grant Park and Buckingham Fountain. Passing the Art Institute, Maggie Daly Park, the Pritzker Pavilion, and the Bean. In front is the Aeon Tower, Prudential Plaza, and the sloped roof of Crane Communications. You can fly down Michigan Ave. Past the Water Tower Place. Hancock Tower. And Drake Hotel. Or head north to North and Clyburn, a very nice neighborhood that has some recent aerial footage to compare with, though sadly for the wrong reasons. Flying over Goose Island, we can even see the details of the Home Depot, and one of the larger Whole Foods in the country. We can fly down North Clark Street, making out individual stores. And follow the red line up to Wrigley Field. If you're a real mad lad, you can try and fly the loop tracks downtown, which I totally accomplished on my first try. The elevated tracks gets confused with the roads, but that's an understandable mistake.
But let's take the scenic flight along the lake for seven miles to Promontory Point in Hyde Park. We see the Museum of Science and Industry, left over from the famous Columbian Exposition, and Midway Plaisance, and the University of Chicago. Sorry Northwestern, you can see where my loyalties lie. And Evanston is far. There's Rockefeller, the Booth School of Business, and the Roby House by Frank Lloyd Wright. We pass the main quad to Bartlett and the Regenstein Library, complete with the dome from Divergent. After the hospital, we cross Washington Park and turn left on 55th Street. To get to Midway Airport, all you need to do is follow 55th. We pass the Green Line Station and the Garfield Red Line Station. Chicago Midway Airport holds a special place in my heart when I used to regularly fly ATA. Heck, this channel started with a rant about the food there. Although there's the occasional Porter, Volaris, and Delta flight, the main player at Midway is Southwest. What makes the airport unique is the fact that it's right in the middle of the city. There's no margin for error, and you don't want to overshoot the runway and end up in the middle of the street. Good thing it never snows in Chicago or anything. As an auto-generated airport, Midway isn't that bad. The terminals aren't that distinct to begin with. There's the B and C concourses, and the check-in area on the other side of the road, and the security bridge. So there's the city of Chicago in Microsoft Flight Simulator. On the whole, a really impressive job by Asobo and Microsoft. I could easily spend an hour to go over every landmark, but it's best if you just get out there yourselves. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click that button and please subscribe for my more traditional flight reviews as well as more Microsoft Flight Simulator content. I'll see you on the next one.